Okay, so let's look for solutions then. Yeah. <laughs> Since we have identified the problem, um, and I don't think it's just uh, pertaining to the young people, I think the old people are like that. But yet, the old people not too long ago were more gracious, were more <laughs> considerate to one another. Um, what has happened in between to make us, to condition us to this present state of affairs? The the way Singapore, or the way we've been controlled, I think have a, a part to play as well. Because one of the things I always remember, you know, uh, as, as I grew up, there seems to be a veil of freedom when we're out of the country. And that mm. freedom lies with the fact that you do something that normally being controlled in your country you don't do. For example, if you don't chew gum and you suddenly will chew gum and you start chewing <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, right, Not that right, I do yeah. that, but, <laughs> but there is all that I saw mm. uh, when Singaporeans outside of the country. For example, Does in, in buffet, they, they grab the buffet like, you know, that, like, like <laughs> they have not eaten for <laughs> years, like, you know, they've been released from prison. It's really ugly. And these are the Singaporean tour group when you go overseas. You, know? you don't mm. see that when they're in Singapore. But mm. as part of that, they realize that, you know, there seems to be a sense of control, therefore they moderate their behaviour. Wait, hang on, hang on. You're saying that Singaporeans overseas grab the buffet and in Singapore they don't? Well, they do, but then, they you do. know, I do see worse kind of like rushing. Although I don't see that much here in Singapore that are that ugly. I'm just comparing the degree of it. <laughs> you know, it, that seems to I be quite shocking. I think we go to different shocking. places to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm offering only one part that I feel... I mean, to me, I'm just creating a sort of like, you know, interesting... Uh, um, dilemma here is that Are the you control that the Singapore could cause overseas is also ugly. No, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying Singapore overseas are ugly. I think it's just back to a cultural and the upbringing, the, 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 the you know what we have been through conditioning it. But what I'm saying is that the the, the control that put on us make us more of a rebel. We when we are overseas, we try to do things that we won't dare to do in the country yeah, because right. we know that we're actually going to get fined. Mm -hmm. Are you suggesting then that because our whole life we're conditioned like this? Um, by rules and regulations, and there is an intolerance for error. In turn, we have now become a people that are very intolerant. Even a lot of times, no, I think mean, as a youngster or as a youth, when we give up a seat to the old, the elder, do they come it naturally? Yeah. True. Because there's well, yeah, people food. watching, you know, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. you know that you're sitting in a, a located seat for the, the, mm -hmm. the elder, and you know that uh, many people will start talking about you or maybe storm you, you know, yeah, because eyes <laughs> is everywhere. So it, a lot of times our behavior doesn't come naturally. Yeah. You're you're forced to do it. You know, mm. then somehow sometimes you know I think that kind of liberty, right? When we are more liberated or more free, we kind of behave in the way we we want to be and maybe that's where we become more ugly, you know, mm. yeah. Because that's our very natural state, you know, yeah. So, Nothing. okay. But I think, I think it's wrong to suggest that we competitiveness in itself is bad, right? No, in order to continue to succeed, we need yeah. to be competitive. So in the face of having to live with being competitive, uh, how do we go about relaxing and becoming more gracious? I think what, going to uh, what Kenneth has asked, about moving forward. Uh, for our generation, the millennial generation, and because of postmodernism, where in the in individuals are highlighted, it's all about me and my experience. Uh, I realized that in my own journey or talking to other people, the most powerful motivator is when something is done for you and you get a positive experience out of it. It takes within a day someone to do something courteous or something good to you to make you, you feel good. Feel good. Mm. And then you, you are to motivated do to do okay. something You're right. good, for, good for another person. A lot more can be done. The government can play a, a more important role in this, like community centres. Ah. They could have more uh, events, get-togethers, and then you encourage these people to join, and then they then all of a sudden they realise, oh, you have been my neighbour for the last 20 years, but I have not met you. And then they start you know, striking a conversation, then they get to understand each other better. I think this is important. I think second <coughs> point is in education. I don't know about the, the educational system now. How good is... Is there a subject of moral education? 
No. Do they have? I think they still have. There was, and then there they took was, it away. Yeah. I yeah. think that now it's and back again. I think so. Yeah. That, should be, that should be put back again because that is yeah. important because you have to start uh, education, educating the young. Yeah. And, and, and so when they grow up, they become more gracious. So if you look at the gamma, I think mm. sometimes part of it is also the message you get across. And I think, uh, yeah, I understand the need to, to um, you know, survival, sustainability, mm. continuous growth. But sometimes I think it's good to actually l- allow the message of people who fail and not make it make failure such a big thing. And sometimes government can do a lot more to portray positive messages. Then on the home level, I really think it goes back to the home, to the parents, how the upbringing. Because I think I brought up a family that is actually through that way of upbringing that I'm who I am today. It's part of your family and your upbringing. So to be gracious, to be nice, to be kind from truly from your heart and be natural comes from your upbringing. I think that I cannot stress any more than the importance of that. Then that goes down to the individual. As you start to realize the journey that you're going to go through as a, as a human being, mm-hmm. spiritual, spiritual reality as well. I mean, it's like basically your own pathway yeah. to learn about being kind, being gracious, and you know, helping other people. Mm-hmm. All that will come naturally. So I think that, that to me, is, it forms the triangle, the mm-hmm. three-part relationship to a better society. Okay. Thank you, Tony. How about you, Tony? Mm-hmm. I think out of kindness, sometimes it's, it's been portrayed as a very serious thing to do. But I think if if you know, if the RC you know or the town council can come up with more creative ways to reach yeah, out to yeah. the to the community yeah. in a more approachable ways, I think it is definitely workable. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I think it's that's something that attract the the youth at this age. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. no, 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 not just providing free food, um, but also to entertain them, to keep them happy, I think, kind of thing, take, yeah. take the minds off the yeah, order. Because it, actually, yeah, you know, yeah, Singapore yeah, yeah. is known to be very kind mm-hmm. in the sense that you know a lot of good deeds have been done. The donation mm-hmm. from Singaporeans yeah. to mm-hmm. the needies are quite mm-hmm. big. Yeah, yeah, do you realise that? Yeah, that is true. Uh, I think one of the uh, measures or one of the things that we can do uh, to help us move forward uh, is to help people see needs beyond themselves. You know, whether is it going overseas to see the needs of people who are less privileged uh, or Singaporeans who are less privileged and understanding uh, how blessed we are, how privileged we are, that would uh, mm. help people think more of others rather than ourselves. And I think maybe a second um, idea that I have or a wish that I have is that uh, Singaporeans will be able to spend more time with their family, quality time as well as quantity, both in the immediate as well as the extended family. I think that's something I really treasure about my own family. I think the third thing I learned from my own personal journey is the, the great need for us to learn to love ourselves or to appreciate who we are. I think growing up as uh, a youngster uh, in, in my primary school and secondary school, there are the experiences uh, that shaped my life are not so good experiences because of the stress, like we mentioned, of the education system uh, and also certain social experiences which uh, I learned to, or rather I tell myself things that uh, are degrading of myself and I become a very, very hurtful person uh, or person with uh, carrying a lot of hurts and naturally in some situations I have the tendency to hurt others as well. <coughs> well said. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, if I can just very quickly summarize, I think right from the top, if we speak of the government, now we are talking about uh, not only the government but everybody else, the ability to make mistakes and be forgiven for making those mistakes rather mm-hmm. than for punishing you. Mm-hmm. So we have to ease up on that. The other thing is also to look at the positives rather than the negatives, mm-hmm. to try and reinforce the examples of uh, positive behavior, whether it is uh, public or whether it is in school or whether it is in home, and try and and focus on that rather than the shortcomings. And I think that um, we also spoke about the need to look outside ourselves, not be so self-centered, but to look at uh, the people outside and see what we can give them and uh, the importance of community and reinforcement is also very important where you have to build, you don't live alone and you have to work within the, the uh, milieu of a family, a close family or as Charles mentioned, the larger community 
so that there is a greater sense of affinity um, and, and interaction between people so that they feel more as, as, as one family or one people. Mm. And if we have to look at ourselves, then we should not look at, at ourselves as uh, someone who is trying to compete and trying to win all the time. We have to learn to love ourselves, to think positively about ourselves, and in that way feel good about everybody around us. Okay, so there's hope for the Singaporean. Good night.